Hi, John with Roundabout Woodworks. Uh, a couple of days ago, one of the neighbors uh, put out some sycamore for the city to come pick up. Do that once a month. Uh, that's my favorite time of the month. You get to go find nice free wood. Anyway, the sycamore grows big. They hardly ever cut it. I have a finely tuned ear for chainsaws. I can hear them about a half mile away. I know what direction they're in and everything, so I can go find wood. Uh, but I didn't hear any chainsaws. The, the sycamore that the neighbors put out has been sitting in their backyard, rotting in their backyard, so it's a bit spalted. And, uh, you know, there's a saying that uh, life's too short to turn trashy wood. And ordinarily that's true. Uh, I'm the first one to throw it away if it's punky. But I wanted to experiment. Normally what I do with bowls is I rough them out and I throw them in a cardboard box and let them sit. I don't wax them, I don't paint them. Uh, I rough them, leave them about an inch thick for the average bowl, roughly. I don't measure, it's that thick. Uh, throw in a cardboard box and don't look at them for three, four months. And uh, about that time I'll take the bowls that are on top and I'll put them in the bottom of another box and transfer from one box to the other. The bowls that are at the bottom I check them to see if they're dry and I do that just by feel mostly. Uh, if the bowl is warped then I know it's probably dry because they don't warp when they're wet, they warp when they dry cell walls collapse, shrink up, and the, the wood shrinks. Uh, so that way I have a box full of drying blanks and they're all from the bottom to the top they're wet to dry. So after four or five months, six months, eight months, whatever it is, if the bowl isn't dry yet, I put it on top of the pot. But usually the ones on the bottom of the box are dry so I, that's when I finish them. Uh, these I wanted to microwave because I've never done that before. It didn't occur to me. Well, I guess it occurred to me, but you know, uh, domestic harmony being what it is and wanting to maintain it, uh, I have kept my stuff out of the house and especially out of the kitchen. So. What I probably should have done was show you the roughing out, but it didn't occur to me to make a video about this until after I had roughed them. And I thought, well, I'll do a video about microwave and bowls. That'll be interesting. Watching a microwave. No, that wasn't going to be interesting. So I microwaved them myself, myself off camera, and uh, the way I did it, which is the wrong way, I'm sure, for a couple of reasons that I'll go into in a minute. Uh, I put it on three minutes. Just I hit the button on three minutes and I went on about my business and waited for the thing to beep at me. Came out, pulled my steaming bowl blanks from the uh, microwave and set them to dry inside the house where the humidity is lower. This is Houston in the summertime. Humidity is 150% it feels like. Uh, anyway, let them dry. As soon as the bowl was cool, back in the microwave for three minutes. And this took uh, four or five hours of doing that, maybe six hours. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention. I just was listening for the beat and put the bowls back in the microwave. And what I noticed was is that I weighed them also. They, when, they stopped gain, when they stopped losing weight, I quit. I figured that's as dry as it's going to get. But I noticed that the, the drier the bowl became, the hotter it was when it came out of the microwave. The first time out of the microwave, it was warm to the touch, steaming, but not very hot. The last couple of times that the bowls came out of the microwave, they were just too hot to touch. And rather than adjust the timing, I just played hot potato. Which brings me to the first thing that uh, how I know I did this wrong. On this bowl, 
See this spot right here? It's burnt. All the way through. And it didn't look like that when I started finishing it. It just smelled really good. But it wasn't burnt. There was no discoloration. As I turned down the back, uh, no, excuse me, as I turned down the inside to finish it, the burn spot appeared. And then when I turned over to take off the foot, this tenon, uh, the burn spot was all the way through. And, uh, anyway. Second reason that I probably won't do this again until I get a microwave of my own in the shop is because it smelled wonderful to me, to my lovely wife. No, she didn't like the way that smelled. And uh, honestly, I think there's something wrong with her because it smelled great. I wish the house smelled like that all the time, but it's not going to. Anyway, so what I did after I dried the bowls, uh, I brought them out here to the lake and uh, finished them. And I've got that on video. You'll see the, more, the majority of that. Uh, anyway, enjoy the video. What you're looking at is a piece of spalted sycamore that I roughed out yesterday and then I put it in the microwave. You can see ferocious tear out. And uh, I normally spalt my own wood. I'm sure most of you that have a wood pile turn green wood, spalt your own, whether by accident or by design. The tear out on this was ferocious. Uh, uh, looks like you can tell right there. Just terrible. And it's even flaking away now. So what I did was I dried this I actually several roughed out pieces dried in the microwave which I'll talk about after this part of the video uh, wet wood when it tears out really bad can sometimes be easier to turn when it dries and what I normally do is rough it throw it in a cardboard box with a bunch of other roughed out bowls and wait and then three or four months later or whenever the mood hits me uh, I take the top of the, take them out of that box and put them in another box so that I can look at the oldest bowls and if they're fairly dry then I'll go ahead and turn them but I microwave this one so what I've done is just mark the center because I don't use a tailstock when I rough I, I attached a face plate because the screw chuck wouldn't hold I knocked this one off the lathe trying to do it with a screw chuck. The wood is really punky. So I, I've just found the center of the foot and the bowl is thick enough that I've got lots of room to work with. It doesn't matter whether the foot is, the center is off by a quarter or a half, even a half inch, it doesn't matter. And uh, I'm going to mount this between centers, actually not between centers, between a chuck and centers and just friction drive and uh, do the outside and uh, see what kind of surface I can get and uh, you'll be able to watch that that's pretty good I'm going to be using my Irish grind bowl gouge. It's a half inch, I think. I don't know. It's bowl gouge with an Irish grind. And it's uh, freshly sharpened. And I'm going to be cutting the wrong way just to check the surface. very 
very deep, so we're going to have to cut. I'm going to have to remove a lot. Like I said, I, I need to go much deeper, but you can see the before and the after. hear the sound of the tear out, but I can't describe the sound, but you can hear it. That's what that strange noise is.
hit. like we were able to sand our way out of trouble. on my last video there's a bit of glare on the wood and as I get older my eyes need more light to do the job so I'm not sure what to do and I, I need the light to see what I'm doing and too much light makes it so you can't see what I'm doing and uh, yeah I am aware that uh, the reason I'm doing this on, vi on video is so that you can see what I'm doing not so I can see what I'm doing kind of have to see what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm going to be using just a standard grind bowl gas. Maybe I'll show you how I sharpen my gouges. I've shown you how I sharpen my skew. That's 30 seconds to do. This takes a little bit longer. Just a little bit at a time, and then I will attempt to clean it up. 
up with a scraper. If I clean it up, I mean level it out, remove the ridges. I'm not going to try and cut into the wall with a scraper because you can break the bolt off that way if you're not careful. And I'm always careful, but sometimes I'm unlucky. what sounds like a crack, which is why I keep stopping and checking it, because it sounds like a crack. That's a tear out. See what a sharp gouge does for tear out.
soak it in Danish oil. Alright, now I'm going to use my Irish grind bowl gouge and turn the foot off. Mount it in some cold jaws. 